everybody out there in Galaxy Con land. It is Kid Cadet. And I'm Danica Janelle. And we are here with another Saturday stream for you guys. We have a really awesome stream. And how about without any further ado, let's bring out our first guest. He is the bassist from Blue October, the one and only Matt Novetsky. The one and only. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever heard that before my name. <laughs> well, you are. You're one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. And yeah. our second guest is another one and only. Uh, I can't imagine another one. You might know him from Band of Brothers, Southland, or Walking Dead. We have Michael Cudlitz. Yay! <laughs> Hi! Hey, guys. Good to All see right. everybody. We are rearranging the screen, and there we go. All right. How are you guys doing so far today? I'm good. <laughs> you guys staying sane? <laughs> Uh, trying to stay sane. Yeah. Hanging in there. What about you, Michael? I am. I mean, it's, uh, we've been in, I'm in Los Angeles, so it's been, we're, we're on week four. We, we finished week four, actually. Uh, my wife and I and everyone in our house started sort of, uh, self-quarantining, mostly stay at home, uh, except for shopping and stuff, uh, four weeks ago now. And, uh, it's been good. Kids are home from school. Uh, so classes, college classes now are all online. Got a full house and uh, wagons are circled. So uh, we're doing good. We're going we're, we're gonna to get through this, all of us. Definitely. Well, thanks again so much for joining us. Like I was mentioning to you before, Danik and I absolutely adore doing these streams and we look forward to it. And we know everyone watching now, we're starting to get some comments in. Legend from Mighty Ducks 3. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> quack, quack, quack. So I guess to start this off, um, obviously, we're going through a crazy time right now, but let's kind of put that to the side. We want to know about survival tips. And for, for you, Matt, it would be survival tips in a studio or while you're on tour. And for you, Michael, survival tips while you're doing a film or a TV show. Ooh. Survival tips in the studio. Um, boy, that's that. I feel like the studio, that's kind of easy because the studio, everybody's sort of hunkered down as it is. Like everybody's like kind of in, we're shutting ourselves off from the outside world. I mean, you know, right? You know firsthand, like you're sort of, um, you're already in that mindset where you're you're in your own little space, you're in your own little bubble and the rest of the world is out there and you don't really care what's going on out there. And then, you know, you like after a week or two, you come out and, and the sun's in your face and it's like kind of like where he's sitting right now and it's bright and you're like, oh, I haven't seen the sun in a while. So I think that like, I think that doing this and doing this, this regularly sort of has prepared me for this situation a little bit because I'm, I'm used to being in a confined space like this for like weeks at a time with, you know, with just a couple people or just like three or four people and that's it. So it's, it's pretty easy as far as that goes. Survival tips on the road is a completely different story. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a little different. You're in a new place every, you know, every day you wake up and sometimes you don't know where you are until you walk outside and look around, you know, and, and, uh, and usually there's a whole crowd of people like uh, right outside of the bus. So the bus parks, you wake up the first thing you get out of your bunk, you know, you haven't even had coffee yet. You open the door and there's like a line of people all, you know, sometimes all lined up right there. They're all ready to go. They're ready to go to the show. So that's tough, man. That's a that's a that's a hard one. I would just say you really have to obey the rules. You got to stay. You got to stay at least six feet away, at least. OK, that makes so, sense. I don't know how it's possible on the road, honestly. Ugh. What about you, Michael? Yeah, I think uh, the s same thing. I mean, it's the studio or the the sound stage. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. You sit around and it's like you're you, you spend all day waiting, you know, for when you're up. Uh, I imagine it's the same thing with with the music. You're you know diff the different parts, the different tracks are getting laid, and there's a lot of downtime, a lot of you know chatting. But but it's all very concentrated in one place, and you sort of the think tank. You kind of stay in there until you work your way through it. You know, mm -hmm. so you are. This isolation part is not the hardest, I think, for us, probably. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a, a lot of what we're doing now is, is probably a lot of what we do anyway, in, yeah. a, in a weird way. Um, but traveling, I don't know. I mean, specifically talking about this survival on the road, I don't, I don't know how my work survives outside of the, 
the soundstage um, or the studio for 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 the you know the immediate future. There's just so many people involved mm-hmm. working really close together, and you know one of the one of the reasons why we all watch television and film and TV is to to see wonderful characters get into conflict, and conflict means close proximity, and close proximity means the exchange of of different fluids, whether you're fighting or in a sweat or it's a love scene or like there's a there's a lot of very, 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 very close contact. So mm-hmm. um, so I don't know. I don't know how we you know how we come out of this or how quickly, but um, it's going to be interesting to see how it uh, it changes um, it, how we move forward. You know, Definitely. we're going through I mean, everybody. We're going through a lot of content right now. The, the, the world is going to be itching for for more film and TV and music and, you know, because people are blown through books and oh, yeah. albums and TV and, you know, films and Netflix. And so it's going to, we come out the other side, everybody's going to be hungry for, you know, for new content for the stuff that we do. And it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how we provide that. Definitely. Well, kind of a follow up to this. I like this question from, from Willow. What are you all doing to stay creative during lockdown? Ooh. Go ahead. So um, I'm actually, I actually have a new music project that uh, I started working on this with, uh, with my best friend, um, who was our tour manager for a long time, um, Al- Alski. Uh, he and I actually started doing something. We'd started doing it just for fun, just a writing project. And then when we were, when, when, you know, the, everything hit the fan and we turned around, you know, with the Blue October tour and that got postponed and pushed back and we came home. It, it, the one of the first things I did was called him up and said, "Well, it looks like I'm going to be home for a while. Um, looks like you know we're both going to be around. Why don't why don't we start writing some more? Why don't start tossing some ideas back and forth? And and it's it's kind of weird because we're in different places and we can't be in the same room working together. But because there's only two of us as opposed to like five people in a band, which is the usual thing, it, it is pretty easy to FaceTime and Zoom, you know, Zoom meeting, all that, and get a lot of work done. And we've actually made a ton of progress on this record that we're working on right now. So I feel like that's been my escape. Like I've I've stayed super creative while we've been home, and it's I'm actually really proud of it. Awesome, yeah. it's coming along. I'm envious. I yeah. feel like I feel like I have, <laughs> as ironic as it sounds, and as similar as I said a minute ago, as it is to working. Uh, I have been, I don't think I've ever been less productive. I start every day thinking, all right, I'm going to get up early. I'm going to hit this. I'm, I got a few scripts I got to read. I got stuff I got to do around the house. Nowhere I got to, you know, nowhere where I ha- have to be. Yeah. So, I, you know, I start out thinking I'm going to take care of it. And then I wind up doing nothing. And then the worst part is around 11 or 12 o'clock, I sort of look and go, oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get the jump on the day the way I wanted to. So, uh, all right, that's a wash. I guess I'll start tomorrow. It's, it's only like eleven o'clock. <laughs> I think a lot busy. of us can relate you know, to I, that. I would die to have two hours, you know, and they still have from eleven o'clock till ten o'clock at night. And I'm sort of like, yeah, no, it's it's a wash. Yeah. So I I need to, I, in some ways, probably get my list together and stick to what I usually do, which is working down my list. But it's been uh, I've been you know I've been getting a lot of sleep. Me too. <laughs> I feel like you know my body's repairing for the last from the last twenty years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I have not been as uh, as productive as I had hoped. So <laughs> at all. that can be good for you, though. I think I, that can I'm be good for you. Trying to not beat myself up about it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Because then it's like the it's like like dieting. You're dieting. You blow your diet. Like it's you don't even get to enjoy the thing you blew it with. Like you're pissed right. off. You ate it. You're th- you know, you're kind of like well well either enjoy it and don't do it or or don't do it and be happy you stuck to your diet. Yeah. But right now yeah. it's like I, so yes I will enjoy the fact that I'm not doing anything. Well, man, you've been pretty busy lately too. So it's like I think yes. it's I think you get a free pass. You get to hit the reset <laughs> button for a little while. Yes. No, it has been. I've been very fortunate and yeah. and so it is nice to have some time with the family and everybody is home. My kids are home from school and it's been it, that part's actually been fantastic. So Yeah, same here. I, I don't know if anyone else is looking at the same visual as me, but Michael, your beard is <laughs> lit up so majestically. It is so beautiful. <laughs> I'm just I like, might have oh. to move so you guys can actually see. <laughs> <laughs> I like the majestic beard. 
So, yeah, I feel like I'm blowing out. I'm gonna. I'll try sitting over in another tag. <laughs> You're too kind. We're getting a tour of the house. House. Oh, no, I noticed. That. No, I'm gonna stay outside if I'm gonna smoke. So. <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to mention. So I met Matt. I guess maybe like a year or two ago, and I had the opportunity to come to your studio. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> one of the things that I remember first talking to you about was your love for The Walking Dead, and that's. The oh yeah out to me you're like this is my phantom i love the walking dead was yep. there a moment or a character or a scene or season that made you a fan well i was actually i'm so i read the comic before the before the show started i'm one of those i'm an og i'm one of those guys yeah so um you know so i was already pretty i was pretty immersed into the walking dead universe when the show began um you know but uh there wasn't, I don't think there was one, that's one of the things I love about the show, to be honest with you, though, is it's not like a lot of shows where it's like, you just remember that one character, you just remember that one event, and that kind of summarizes everything, and that makes, you know, that that's like that, that one pinnacle thing that happened. There's so many different cool moments, just like the comic book, there's so many different, you know, moments that you take from different eras, and different characters, and I have a lot of different characters that I love from the show, that I've loved from, you know, from different points in time. Um, but I don't think there was one like particular thing that made me fall in love with the show. I loved the comics a lot. I thought the comics were fantastic. And so the thing that I loved about the show and that I still love about the show is it's really hard to take something that are, in another medium is already something that you love and then do it justice in another medium. So I think it's like, I mean, how many times you heard people say, well, this movie was based on a book and the movie sucked. Mm -hmm. I mean, you hear it all the time, you know, it's like, yeah, don't, don't read the book. The book is way better than the movie. Um, the show is fantastic. I love the show. I mean, and, and obviously a lot of people really love the show, but I, that's just, just one of the things that, that I think is, is amazing about it is, you know, there's so many, uh, there's so many failed attempts at remaking something or taking something and adapting it in a different way. And that show has done it so well that it's like just the, you know, it's, there's, I mean, look, there's how many shows now? <laughs> there's a whole universe now, you know? I mean, it's like, it it's blown up into this amazing thing, you know? So I love the whole story, personally. I do. Very cool. Michael, did you read the comics before the show as well? I, did, I didn't read them before, but I read them before I started doing the show. So after I got cast, I, I read them and I loved them, you know, yeah. which was, which was uh, kind of interesting for me because I wasn't a huge comic uh, fan growing up, and not that I wasn't a fan, but we didn't. I grew up really, really. We were very, very poor. Um, yeah. th that was like comics were just that was a luxury, and it was something I never, never had access to. Yeah. Um, obviously, when I when I was getting older, I did and I knew you know I knew of the superhero worlds and those things because um, uh, our culture is so steeped in it in so many different ways. But I never really uh, got into it. But when I had auditioned and found out that you know what it was i it piqued my interest and i started looking at it and got into it and i and i realized how as matt was just saying how wonderfully this would lend itself to a tv show and then i started watching the show got caught up on the show and i was like holy crap you know it's just this wonderful sort of revolving door of characters that you yeah. know and the show did it a little bit differently uh, obviously but you know the geographic world and the general characters you know for the most part early on were you know stayed to the comic and then they drifted and now we're com you know in some ways completely off the rails so far as uh in reference specifically to the comic but the ge geography and the ge geographic world of the show uh, continues to be the same we're still coming you know to places that we we visited in the graphic novels um but you know i loved how you know you you would go through characters and fall in love with characters and then lose them and then get reintroduced to new characters and sort of be able to fall in love with them and it, it, to me, it fixed the problem that some TV shows have uh, today where it's just literally the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. Whereas in some ways, yes, they get in danger and then they get out of danger and things get good and then they go bad. And that's a cycle that keeps repeating itself. But you keep seeing it through different characters' eyes that you've fallen in love with. And that makes it a completely different experience. Um, so... You know, although, again, I wasn't a fan of the comics prior, not, not that I wasn't a fan, just I hadn't read them. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, Kirkman does a great job with, with the storytelling and the world building. Um, and it's just so much fun to do something based on a comic because it's 
it's sort of this permission slip. And, and, and that's why I think that that our world sometimes is more successful so far as The Walking Dead than, than Fear the Walking Dead is sometimes because we, we get to people our world with sort of ridiculous characters. And I say ridiculous mm-hmm. with love. Like, because, yeah. you know, the guy with the huge mustache and Michonne with the swords and Daryl with the crossbow, you're like, uh, you know, in a way, they're, they're, they're humanoid superheroes, you know, but right. we, we get to go a little bit further with them because it's based on the graphic novel and fear is not. So theirs is definitely anchored in a much more real way, you know, because you, in your mind, you think, well, what, what would it look like if, if Abraham shoo up, showed up in the world of fear? And the people would be like, who the fuck is this? guy like, right. like what the yeah. hell is happening <laughs> but in our world it, it exists because it's it's just a little bit elevated and and i and i i think it's a wonderful place to tell stories if you are elevated like that but you are grounded you know in in a reality so it's it's been a blast awesome uh we've had a couple people ask how you feel about negan i love negan i think it's a great oh, character great. yeah <laughs> yeah i think he talks too much sometimes um, yeah. But I felt that way in the comics too. You know, Abraham would go on riffs in the comic book too. That would just be like, just forever. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'm uh, I, I think it's a great character. And Jeff, I think Jeffrey Dean Morgan does a great job with him. So it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Well, and so Matt, what what were your views when you were watching that emotional scene between Abraham and Negan? Man, I gotta say. I, I have to say that I think that that was the most epic <laughs> death <laughs> ever. I mean, as far as like anything I've seen on TV or any movie, that was the just, that was the most insane, epic, brutal death I've, I've watched. I mean, it was like, it just, it was, it just, you know, because for months and months and months, everybody, you know, it was, it was like on lockdown. It was like, can't talk about this. Like, well, who's it going to be? And there were like websites devoted to let's analyze every little detail of where they are and where they're kneeling and, you know, and, and you know, trying to look for clues and everything. I and mean, it's crazy, you know. So then when it actually happened, it was just like there was so much buildup to it that when it actually happened and I watched it, I, I just I remember and I actually reached out to a to a really good friend of mine who happens to be the guitar player for Anberlin, Joey Milligan, he and I are both big fans and I hit him up right away. And he, and I'm like, I feel kind of sick to my stomach right now. And he was like, so do I, <laughs> this is bizarre. Like, why is this affecting me so much, man? Um, but honestly, man, it just couldn't have been done any better. I mean, that, that scene was just phenomenal. It was so good. And kudos to you, man. It was just, it was perfect. Everything yeah, about it was yeah. perfect. It was. I, I um. We we get uh, people ask us often why we think that the, the deaths affected him uh, everyone so uh, strongly. Yeah. And it's interesting because we've had we've had many more gruesome deaths. Honestly, when Noah gets disemboweled inside oh, the yeah. turnstile, yeah. I mean that you know visually that is much more graphic. And, but these are characters that you love. Yeah, you know, like the audience cared so much, and I think there was so much for people who knew the graphic novels. There was such a, there was such a sort of like, a, like they knew it was probably going to be Glenn, because it's yeah. you know the hundred hundredth episode, the hundred or the hundredth um, edition, um, and they were just sort of like, well, I don't think it's going to be, but it might be. And we had filmed a whole bunch of different things, Easter eggs, and mm-hmm. sort of like misdirects. So if anything leaked, people would you know not be able to to figure it out and you don't have to like get everybody like you don't have to to lie to everybody you just have to mm-hmm. throw out doubt like i don't have to make right. you know like it was him or it wasn't him or it wasn't her i just have to throw out a little bit of doubt and once you doubt yeah. you can go yeah i know it's gonna be but but maybe and then it's it like the, yeah. then we've won because people out there going oh i know it's like we go well i think well maybe so at that point, you've won. And then when they took Abraham out, you're kind of like, oh, shoot, I guess it's not going to be Glenn. And then they double gut punch you and then take him oh, out. Oh, yeah. You're like, what is happening? Yeah. Those jerks. <laughs> yeah. So they did, they did a great job uh, with it. And Greg Nicotero did a fantastic job directing it. And the whole, you know, that whole episode, like the whole first three quarters of the episode, because it's, it's done with flashbacks and crossbacks and back and forth only takes place over about 
eight or 10 minutes in time. It's so well done. The whole yeah. hour only takes place in like the shortest amount of time. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a, it's a long, long ride getting there. It, it, for me, I have to say it was, it really was a double gut punch because my two favorite characters, those were my two favorite characters oh. up to that point. So it was That's like, cool. Oh man, there goes one of them. I guess it's not going to be Glenn. And then, <laughs> oh, there, there it is. Yes, okay, exactly. I'm gonna go have a drink. <laughs> it was like the first thing happened. Matt, they're like, Matt's two favorite characters. Get <laughs> like, out of here. Where do we yeah. go from here? You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's the night to whoever. Amazing. Um. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I kind of wanted to talk about with Matt being a musician is music how it really drives a scene or drives a movie. And I was wondering if there was any specific movie that you can think of that you're like, wow, this soundtrack was so perfect. It's what really made the film iconic. Hmm. I would say Magnolia. Magnolia? Um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it, every song in that movie is is just, it's so, perfect it's just so perfect for the scene and the thing that i really love about uh about the anderson movies are he takes it it's it's not a, a bunch of obscure songs it's songs that it's risky because it's songs that everyone knows it's songs that people are familiar with and if you did it if you didn't do it in just the right way and you and it wasn't as tasteful as it as it is with the way that he has done it um then it could it could just be like the complete opposite. It could just be a total shit show. It could you know it's like oh that didn't work at all. Why did you take a song that I I've known forever? I grew up on that song and put it in the, in here in this scene. He's so good at picking the perfect song for the perfect scene and making you remember it. Um, like Ario Speedwagon, you know, like it's just so many classic songs in that movie. And that movie to me is it's it's just as much about the soundtrack as it is the movie itself. Maybe I feel that way because I'm a musician. I don't know, but that would be my first choice. Magnolia. All right. Yeah. Interesting. I got I, I, music is I, I've been directing the past year and a half, and it's amazing to me how music can it can do so many things, uh, as we all know. But you can take a scene that is not really working and elevate it immensely with just the music. If you have something that you were maybe either from a writing standpoint or an acting standpoint or the way I shot it or so, something's just not really working. You can pull it all together with music. And the other side of that is when you have something where everything is working and it's amazing. And then you add the music to it and it just, Oh my God, just takes it to the next, next level. Yeah. And it's just like watching it. Sometimes it's just, it just really takes your breath away. Um, for yeah. me, there's just two, two, two things where the music really, drove and is what i remember and is part of the film one top gun hmm. uh, yeah. the soundtrack for top gun to me is just like phenomenal yeah uh and two gross point blank of the film that i was in oh love, uh, yes the great soundtrack movie. <laughs> literally captures my childhood yeah. so you know in a way it's it's like it was a, it's a film about a reunion but it's also you know it's incredibly nostalgic but for me personally and i'm sure that everyone of my era feels the same way to some degree that it's like oh yes because the the music choices uh within that era were mm -hmm. just fantastic yeah but what about you danica well uh kind of in the same vein that michael's saying uh for me it's empire records oh yeah oh. <laughs> that's like our favorite movie <laughs> but, yeah. but also uh there will be blood I think that is Ooh. one of the most brilliant scores, um, and yeah. so much of it is is kind of the the lack of music, um, the lack of sound. I think sound design is is really really important to me because um, again, like Michael, I've I'm a theater director, so I think a lot from a lot of different design aspects. So I think those two movies for me, it's like one, it's the nostalgia with Empire Records, and with There Will Be Blood, it's about the the design and the engineering of how to create the lack of music and then put that into, oh my God. How about you? <laughs> Getting clumps. Yeah, for, for me, like my favorite, like soundtrack from a movie is Forrest Gump, but mm. uh, yeah, they, they did a good job. Well, so Matt, if, if there could be a song from Blue October that you think would fit in with The Walking Dead, what song would have been a good fit? Uh, probably the end, but I, I mean, 
that's way too obvious i think um <laughs> sometimes well sometimes it's it, sometimes obvious is is the way to go good. yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes um, it's, it's sometimes hit it right on the head is but i know what you mean sometimes you you want to juxtapose something or have something compliment it but yeah. sometimes right now you know I'll, I'll, I'll have to check it out I, I i would actually i would say home and i would say home um when when you guys first went to Alexandria and started to realize that you could have a home, I oh. think that that song could have been placed very well in a scene oh, <laughs> sometime during that era. I actually. love that song. Yeah. I'll look it up. I, I, yeah. I, put, I put friends of mine music in twice already. So well, Let's be friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just put in, uh, I'm a big Delta Ray fan, and I just put Oh, the, yeah. I just put one of their things. It hadn't even been released, and I wrote them. And I go, "Hey, you got anything that hasn't come out yet?" Because they were just going. They were just shifting their thing with big machine. With uh, big machine, is it? Yeah. Where they left, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they're doing their own stuff now. They're they're producing their own albums. And um, I reached out to my buddy Eric, and I'm like, "Hey, do you got anything?" And they he goes, "Yeah, check these things out." And I found and it fit perfectly, and it's in. That's awesome. That's a great. That's a great band. We'll keep in touch. Yeah. Very cool. That sounds like a great collaboration. Yeah. I, I can't. I, I can't hear Danica. Hello. No, they can hear you. I can't hear you. The, oh. That whole music um, thing. I missed it. You're the only one I can't hear. Hmm. Um. Well, either we can have Danica sign out, or we can have you sign out and sign right back in, or maybe both of y'all. Do y'all mind doing that? Oh, rock and roll. I'm afraid I'm gonna lose you, but I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Right, Hopefully we will. Can you can the rest of you hear me too or no? Yeah, yeah I got you. Here? Huh? Maybe it's him. He's on his phone, so I can't. It's possible. Are we back? Am I back? No. Nope. Oh, wait, I don't see him anymore. He's got. Don't him. worry, guys. We'll figure it out. We 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 got this. We got this. Um, so far so good. What what do you think so far, Matt? I love it. I'll I'll, I'll do this anytime. Yay. Well, we appreciate. It. I know we want to have you back with you know someone else in the music. Yeah. Industry too so we, we got that brewing yeah I as long as it's after like three o'clock because like he said i've got i got three three kids at home from from for you know online homeschooling now and it's a it's a lot yeah, <laughs> it's sure. a lot yeah mm -hmm. and then also you know you have your new music in the work like we've been talking yeah. about so mm -hmm. oh, we have them back sideways <laughs> everyone tilt your head there we go oh, there, there we go there we go all right perfect Danica, say something. Now? I do. There you Success. go. That's weird, but good. I'm not weird. I can hear you weird that it went away. Yeah. All right, now we just got to reconfigure the screen. Here we go. Woo. Woo. One more time. Reconfiguring. <laughs> Ta-da! Painless. <laughs> it's magic. It's oh. magic. Oh. Okay, so you, we have Danica? a couple more questions before we get into our game. So what about, um, what is the craziest rumor that you guys have ever heard about yourself? Oh, I was dead. <laughs> like in real life? Uh, like people were like, oh, I was, re re you know, I heard you were dead. I'm like, no. I mean, I guess. <laughs> you just acted really well and they just. I don't think I'm dead. Maybe I am. You're talking about my career? Or... <laughs> Maybe I should reassess. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Um. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I like to think it's a rumor, but I actually remember somebody saying this was pretty recent. It was on on the fall tour. Uh, somebody said, "Yeah, I thought you were a jerk. I thought you're supposed to be a jerk. Like you were like really unapproachable." And I'm like, I feel like I'm super approachable. Like I feel like I'm, I'm a nice guy. Damn it, yeah. you know. Like I don't know who you told you that. Where'd you hear that? You know. But I think it's, I think where that comes from though is with within in, in the uh, Blue October world. There's a lot of personality. There is a lot of personality in 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 the band, and uh, and I'm the bass player, man. I want to be the quintessential bass player. I want to be quiet and laid back, and I don't I don't want to try to be too loud. I don't want to be the I don't want to be Negan, you know. So so yeah. I, I'm chill. So maybe people think that since I'm quiet and I don't talk a lot or something that I'm I'm not friendly, but that's not the well, case. Apparently, apparently, Matt Vincent said you bought him some chicken strips once, so you're a really cool guy. <laughs> Vinny, oh man, that's my boy right there. 
Um, okay, so we can, I think uh, interesting, uh, just taking that a little further, I think the thing that Matt was saying on is that people do, there's, there's such a high expectation and high emotional level, I think, that fans meet you with because they know you from from certain things or, you know, they maybe they've been to every one of your concerts and they're finally going to get a chance to meet you. And then they see you and there's this crazy expectation, crazy just in the sense of the, the energy level of it, not that it, it's crazy. Um, and they're excited. And then if, you know, if you're in a rush to go somewhere and you have to be somewhere and like you, as always, we kind of, we're, we're almost always behind schedule mm-hmm. and we're getting somewhere and you get rushed and maybe you like made eye contact with somebody and walked away and they're like, Oh, you know, fuck that. Guy. You're yeah. like, dude, I like, no, I'd love nothing more than meeting fans. And every once in a while, we're, we're, we don't have, we actually don't have time to stop. And this person has changed their whole routine and, and you know, and waited maybe for even hours. And, and then you blow by yeah. and they're like, you know, what's up with that guy, yeah. you know? And you're like, I, I, I'm in the middle, you know, I'm in the middle of my work day. And I, I understand, but yeah. it's just, it's a hard, it's a hard balance. And, and honestly, most, most people understand, but every once in a while, and then coupled with every once in a while, we just have bad days, you know, yeah. and we're just not You're in the human. mood to, yeah. you know, and you just, and, and unfortunately it's, you know, we don't, those two things, when they meet up, it's the perfect storm for somebody saying, oh, you're a jerk or, you know, this and that. But it's like, you know, I just want everybody to know that they should always try to approach me. Cause people go, oh, I saw you and I didn't want to say hi or bother you. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I get it. Like, I know, I know what I do for a living. Yeah. I never understand people who get pissed off. Like, yeah, don't don't come, you know, talk to me when I got my mouth full of food or something. But just yeah. kind of, you know, just Change approach it. it logically. And chances are the people you want to say hi to, if you do it respectfully, they're going to respond to it. And honestly, if they don't respond to it, fuck them. Yeah, because that's I agree. Bullshit. Because yeah. we we are where we are doing what we're able to do because of the fans. And if it weren't for the fans like we would not be doing what we're doing so honestly like if people are rude rude they don't fucking deserve any level of of success in their field that they're having if it's a fan-based success that's yeah. my opinion yeah comes with the territory there's sure. a lot of people in the comments now that are vouching for on both of your behalfs how wonderful and kind you are i can also vouch i think you are two of the nicest people i've ever had the opportunity to meet no. And thank you. I, and thank you guys. Thank you for being so nice. And yeah. it's, it's easy to be nice. To be nice. <laughs> it is. It's actually easier <laughs> it to be nice than to be a jerk. It's a lot harder to be an asshole, you know. <laughs> well, so far so good. Okay. I'm good at that yeah. too. Just not to my fans. <laughs> <laughs> In your role. Okay, so one more question before we get to the game. What do you think, Danica? Do you have a good question you want to ask or? I was actually wondering, um, should we ask the one about, um, it's sort of a, a swap deal. So, uh, Matt, what character from Walking Dead, or actually we could do this uh, of any of the characters that Michael has played, because there's so many from so many different shows um, that you relate to most. And the flip mm. side of that, uh, Michael, are there any bands that you relate to most? Maybe not that's your favorite, but that it's something that you mm. relate to and you you really empathize with with the band mostly hmm well um i kind of want to go gross with the gross point blank just because that that is such a great movie and uh and it, it takes place in detroit so that's near and dear to my heart but um i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with walking dead and uh i'm gonna say I'm going to say Carl actually. And I think it's, I think it's because Carl is kind of like the, 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 he's, he's sort of soft spoken and he's sort of the, um, he's a little adventurous, but he's also kind of the, the quiet, thoughtful type. But I feel like when he does open his mouth, he usually has something very wise to say. And he usually has something he thinks about what he's he's uh, going to say before he says it. And so I feel like when it comes out, he's really good at sort of getting everybody to stop and, and go, oh, yeah, okay, okay, I get it. I get where he's coming from. And I think that if you're going to be a producer and I think that if you're going to be sort of like the, you know, the extra member of a band when you're making a record, you have to be that that way. You can't just fly off the handle. You can't just speak emotionally and react to things. You got to be you have to have a good calm demeanor about you. And then I think that you have to really educate yourself when it comes to the artist and what they want. And then you have to think about, okay, if I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to make a suggestion, I want them to be receptive to it. 
So I think that they have to take what I'm saying seriously and they have to consider And if they're going to do that, then maybe what I should say should have some merit to it. And maybe, maybe it should actually be a good idea in the first place, you know? So sure. yeah, Fair. that's what I would say. Awesome. What'd you think, Michael? Um, musically, I, I don't know. I, for some reason, Billy Joel has always uh, spoken to me musically. There's, there's Billy Joel songs that I've known most of my life, if not my entire life, uh, that I can listen to that just destroy me like every time, you know, you know, yeah. you know, the words to it, you've heard it a million times, you know, I, I, I will listen to down Easter Alexa and, and turn into a sobbing child in my office. And every once in a while I just do that. I'm just like, I'm going to go listen, you know, go do some paperwork and listen to Billy Joel. But that's kind of my anchor, uh, music. Um, my music tastes are are literally all over the place, um, all over the place. So people are like, what's your favorite? I'm like, I, I don't have a favorite. If it's good, it doesn't matter the genre. Uh, yeah. If it's good, it's good. And good music is good music, and it comes in 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 every form. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, it comes from the musicians, the passion, and you know, and it's it's it, it, some stuff is. Might be wonderful, but you know, from a musical standpoint, you know, if you're asking a musician, they'd be like, "Well, they're not," you know, they might not be the best musician, but what they do is from the heart, and it and it can still just destroy you in in the yeah. best possible way. So, um, Billy Joel, final answer. Billy Joel, is that your final? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> we'll accept that. Yes. Okay. So we're going to play a game right now. So we're going to set this up for you. This is kind of a two-part game. We're gonna have some pictures up on the screen and we urge everyone watching right now to play along. This first part of the game, we're gonna show you two different people and we wanna know which one of these two people would you like to lead you through the zombie apocalypse? So this is our first part of the game. Let's bring up these pictures. Okay, so choose your leader. Do you choose Ezekiel or do you choose Joe Exotic? <laughs> I'm going. I'm going with Ezekiel. I'm going. Okay. Joe I'm going Joe Exotic. A any reason why, Michael? Why are you choosing? Why Joe? the hell not? Okay. <laughs> okay. I think. I think we might. We probably know what we're gonna get from Ezekiel, but Joe, that's that's a whole new show. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, Tiger King Joe. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Next one. All right. We've got Iron oh. Man. Or Batman. And again, so Batman, this is whichever Batman you choose. But that is actually the Robert Pattinson Batman, right? It is. It is. Oh, but it is. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Of the, he's got the cowl, and, cowl with yes. the ears. But around The big controversy on the Batman. ears on the cowl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. I'm going with Batman, but I'm going with Adam West Batman. Ooh. Absolutely, okay. because I'm sorry, you just can't beat the campiness of Adam West Batman. Nobody can do it like he can. I'm I'm going Iron Man. Although, like I said before, I'm not a huge comic fan. That he that is the character that actually brought me into the world, the comic world of the movies. That I was like, oh, okay, if they're gonna if they're gonna do it that way, that's how you do it. Because I I feel like that that was the first time. Again, I'm talking for all you comic book people that are about to beat me up um, <laughs> the film we'll back. version and Robert Robert Downey Jr.'s version of Iron Man because mm -hmm. I felt like it was incredibly incredibly character driven uh, film okay he's my Next. daughter's fave mm -hmm. yeah Iron oh Man. yeah loves he's Iron Man. a lot of fun yeah. oh yeah he's great all right number three Bill Murray yeah. oh my or God. Jeff Goldblum I'm so Lord. sorry I mean, this is controversial I know yeah. I know. We meant them to be difficult. <laughs> yes. Oh, this one is actually. This is this is hard, but I'm going to go with my first instincts, which which is actually Jeff Goldblum. Okay. I mean, oh. I, as much as I love Murray, I love Bill Murray, but my buddy actually just mixed Jeff Goldblum's big band album, and it is phenomenal. So I feel like I have to go with him. Oh, cool. I, I feel like I have to. And I would say based on his, his Ghostbuster experience, I'm yeah. going to have to go with Bill Murray. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> These are very solid answers. He's incredible. <laughs> All right. What's our next one? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So, Indiana hmm. Jones or Han Solo? 
that's a no-brainer for me. I'm going Han Solo. Han Solo is the absolute best Star Wars character of all time. Plain and simple. I'm sorry. He's he's you can't beat Han. He's the best. I'm with him. I'm there. Thank oh, you. Yeah. okay. Wow. We got one. Nice. Okay. Up next. Okay, we have Justin, the singer from Blue October. Or free. <laughs> You can't put me in this position, man. You got to do it. Look, I, 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 Justin is my leader. He is my leader and I love him, but I grew up on Flea. Flea was my idol. Like he, and he's everything that Flea says, even in an Instagram post just is so spiritual and cool and he can't do anything wrong. Um, I'm going to go with Flea. I'm sorry. I love oh, Justin, but I got to go with Flea. We won't tell Justin. Uh, I'm gonna go with Flea too because I feel like we'd get like like a like a, a philosophical Michael Rooker. Yeah. Someone who yeah. Someone who who would at the drop of a hat lose their fucking mind if they had to. <laughs> but we'll think about it afterwards and sort yeah. of reflect. That's great. Okay. Oh man. All right, Danica, you got the next one? Yeah, what's our next one here? Oh man, so <laughs> Officer Ooh. John from Southland or Sergeant Denver Bull Randleman from Band of Brothers. <laughs> yeah, again, first instinct, I'm going Bull. I mean, Band of Brothers is one of the greatest shows of all time. Absolutely. Like, you, it, I'm sorry, you just can't beat it. I love the character, always have. That's my choice. I would, I would go with, oh, this is tough because I don't know if, uh, Bull wouldn't want to be the leader. Hmm. Oh, that's a good point. And but he would be a great leader. So I think a lot of good leaders don't want to be. I'm yeah, the I'm apprehensive gonna to, leader. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with you on that as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very cool. All right. So now we're on the second part of this game. So this is just between the two people or groups who would survive the longest. So the first one we have Urkel. Or Screech. This is just who would survive longer. Uh, th between the two people? Yes, between Urkel or Screech. Michael, I'm going to let you go first. I'm going to say Screech because the dude would just pull his balls out. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can't, like, I'm going, like, you in, bro. Like, yeah. That's like Berserker stuff. It's like, you got, like, oh, all right. Berserker. <laughs> I, I I agree. I'm going Screech too because I think he would just. I think he would annoy the zombies to death. To, to just like he would just annoy. It doesn't matter if you're alive or dead. He's just annoy the shit out of you. So he's gonna survive. He's like it's him and him and cockroaches, man. All right. Except the roaches. <laughs> wow. Uh, we're here oh, jeez. All right, our next one is Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel. Who would survive longer? Mm -hmm. I feel like Fallon would survive longer because I feel like Jim Kimmel would be like, he gets to a point where he's just like, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. And Jimmy's kind of like, Jimmy's kind of like, well, let's, let's, we'll figure it out. We don't want to like that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like would, let's sing a song. Let's play a game. Let's like keep yeah. working out. And then, and, and uh, Kimmel, I feel like gets to a point where he's just like, nah, that's, that's it. That, that's my opinion. Noted. Um, I'm going to go with Kimmel and I'm going to go with Kimmel. We, 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 you know, we, we actually did a show a couple times and it was so much fun. He was such a cool guy, awesome. but he's like super duper. I don't know. He's just cool. He's really like he's super laid back and cool. And I think uh, I think he's got just good instincts. He's got good survival instincts. Well, you might be doing his show next time. Fallon, instead of Fallon's too happy. Okay. Look at him. Exactly. Just look at him. <laughs> he's so happy. He's always happy. You can't right. be always happy. Can't be. Fallon happy. would end it though. We'd all be we'd all be friends. Like yeah, you know, there you like, go. Come on, the zombies. Yeah. you know they're just hungry. That's a good point. <laughs> You know, you don't get mad at them. <laughs> They're just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Uh, All right. Next one. Okay. This is a oh, group. man. The Juggalos or the Kiss Army. Whoop, whoop. I'm thinking the Juggalos because, like, they're younger. And the Kiss Army's, <laughs> Kiss Army's like, 
like boomer territory at this point. <laughs> I love Kiss. Come on. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, so I was going to pick the Kiss Army because I was going to say, I feel like they've actually been around longer and they've they've uh, they've proven that they're loyal and they 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 uh, can handle all the tough times like like the late 80s. Animal Eyes, I think, was the record when they took the, the makeup off and they made a couple really bad records. So yeah. those fans have stuck around through thick and thin. They've been around for a long time. That's true. Um, but I think you're right, man. I think the Juggalos are younger and healthier and. I think yeah. they got it. That's very kind. Yeah. <laughs> and there's probably a little bit of overlap. Just oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Either way, you got to wear the cool face paint. So, right. yeah. All right. What we got next? Okay. Let's check out our next one. Oh, yeah. Pee Wee Herman or Steve from Blue's Clues. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Indeed. I'm going to have to go. With, I'm going to have to go with Paul. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's smart, dude. He's a really smart dude. Yeah. Um, but if we're, if it's just Pee Wee, I think that would just be fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> the word of the day is zombie. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I agree 100%. I'm going Pee Wee. My, my, uh, my son is obsessed with Pee Wee Herman, so I know every line to every Pee Wee movie, including the latest one, the, the the one that came out on Netflix a couple of years ago, it's on constantly at my house. And I'm I'm not exaggerating when I say it's on almost every single day. It's on at my house. Wow. Um, yes. So I got to go with Pee Wee just out of respect for my child. Okay. I'm going with Pee Wee. <laughs> got it. All right. It. We got two more left. We have oh Snoop D O Double G or Martha oh. Stewart. I know this I'm one. Not, I'm not even going to separate them. I feel like they're a package deal now. Aw. <laughs> we stand. I I love me some Snoop, but man, Martha, man, she survived the joint. <laughs> oh, well, uh, it, yes, but she got in the joint. Oh, that's true. I and mean, Snoop was at, okay. the Just yeah. talking historically, not, you know, I don't know what he's done. I'm just saying... But he's managed to. They've never put him there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good point. <laughs> Snoop it but is. Again, I, I feel like they're they're a team that should not be separated. Yeah, I love it. I love everything about it. All right, Danica, you got the last right. one. Our last one here. Oh yes. <laughs> oh shit. Mr. Randy Quaid or Gary Busey. <laughs> <sighs> I feel like that's a shit storm no matter what you do. Yeah. It's a fun time. I love the picture you guys choose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm... Quaid, because I feel like, you may, you, like you're making Busey look like a maniac. <laughs> yeah. And... and... Quaid, like he he's still out there, man. You still hear about him every once in a while, you know. Didn't he like grow a a, a, a big beard and then like kind of pop up in different areas trying to cross the border or something? And he's he's out there doing some weird shit, but he's surviving. He, he became Michael Cudlitz. He's surviving. There you go. You're like it's like a Pokemon evolution, yeah. I am Dennis Quaid. We're all Dennis Quaid. <laughs> but yes, I believe with Crystal, because he looks like he'd be crazy enough to do anything, but I feel like he'd get a lot of us killed uh, yeah. in doing that. He'd based, be, he'd based be on the, this particular yeah. photo. <laughs> he'd be the one to screw it up for everybody. I I, exactly. I agree with that. Someone said that they're going to team up and drive all the zombies back themselves. I, I would love to see them in a zombie film team up. Oh, man. That's actually a great idea. I just keep looking at that photo. It's like insane. <laughs> because we have to drive back, you like. So, all right. So we have a few minutes left. So is there any final thoughts you guys have? And feel free to final plug thoughts. any other upcoming stuff you've got for us to check out. Well, um, we, yeah, I mean, we just finished our new record. So, if, I mean, that's, you know, of course I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a musician. I'm going to plug our record, but we did just finish a new record. And, uh, you know, it, it's this, the, the, the state of things right now, um, 
it's crazy, you know, it's crazy. I don't know when exactly we're going to be able to get out there and play the songs and share it with everybody firsthand, but I can tell you that we really, really, really miss everyone. And I think that one of the things about this happening and us going through, through all of this, all of us going through this together is that we're going to come out of this taking a lot of, realizing a lot of the things that we took for granted. And I think that, I think we're all guilty of that. I think that we're all guilty of getting kind of comfortable in our own skin and going, yeah, I can go see a show. I can go do this. I can go do that. And then when you're forced to take a step back, you know, and you can't, you don't have those freedoms. You can, can't do those things anymore. It really, you know, I think that that's pretty eye opening. I really do. So I think that when we do get back out there and we're able to play our music and we're able to connect with our fans again, it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And we just happen to have a new record that I'm really passionate about that's coming out that hopefully right about the same time that we're going to be back out there with, with everyone. So yeah, just hang in there and please come see us. Please come hang out with us. Can't wait to see you guys. What about you, Michael? I got, uh, what do I have? Nothing coming out right away. I got, uh, a lot of stuff in the future. If it all comes back, uh, 2020 was shaping up to be work-wise a, a terrific year. Um, but right now it's just more important that everybody stay safe uh, because I am such a people person. This in some many ways is killing me. Um, I just can't wait to get out and, you know, go hang out with my friends, go, go to a bar, just go be around people, you know, but right now this is what we have to do. And, and thank you guys for, for doing this because it's a great way to keep connected with people and yeah i did my first sort of zoom uh meeting yesterday with uh, the cast of a project i'm involved with right now and it it changed my whole attitude just hanging out with people for a minute that weren't in my yeah. right in my direct you know house so um yeah just plugging everybody to be happy and be safe and be kind to each other and and just know at whatever level and, and whatever time frame it's gonna end and we are going to be back out there and we are going to be doing our thing and just everybody, you know, get ready for that. Um, so you can re-enter in a, in a good way for you, like in your head and in your heart. And uh, again, just like be kind. It's uh, we, my wife and I, we take the dogs out and we walk. We're in an area where we can walk because we can keep distance. And everybody we see, it's just like after 9-11. It's just like after the earthquake here in California, yeah. the bigger one uh, in 92. Um Everybody's saying hi to each other, everybody's really smiling and nodding, seeing neighbors you never see. That, that's what we should have with us all the time. It's just yeah. like a high cost to nothing. Hello, just be kind. Yeah. I agree. Well, and then once this is all said and done, we'll have to get you to a Blue October show, Michael. Yeah. I'm going. Let's I'm do going. it. From what I've seen already, I'm like, I'm going to go check out all your stuff now as soon as I get off. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Danica, did you want to plug your podcast? Oh, sure. I've got uh, the Theater Nerd podcast. And oh, I love it already. By my, myself and my colleague, Josh Brewer. You can find us uh Theater Nerd podcast. It's theater with an R-E. There it is on the bottom. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> That's us. Um, we are starting off doing 10-minute plays coming up. So we are releasing one 10-minute play every week. And then we're actually doing a radio play once every month. That's a full-length uh, sound designed and everything radio plays. Um yeah, so we're really excited about that. Awesome. Check that out. It is awesome. And I have hey, a couple somebody, somebody did ask, yes, I did learn how to skate for Mighty Ducks. Oh. <laughs> kept asking that question. I just feel like I have to answer that. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was going to say I did a couple songs with Matt, and I'm waiting to put those out, and they're really cool. So Yes, they are. You got to get on that. I know. I, it, it's it's okay. time. And yeah. uh, actually, we have the list of who we have next week on the stream. So if Jude wants to pull up the list, we can go over who we got coming up or not. Maybe you will. Maybe you will. Oh, here it is. So Monday we have Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sertis, of course, Very from cool. Star Trek. I love them. Yeah. I met They're Marina. Amazing. I met Jonathan in passing and I met Marina uh, overseas. All these That's guys awesome. are great. Look at you guys. Oh, yeah. Killing it. We have Lou Ferrigno. I guess he's going to be teaching about like at home workouts during this quarantine time. So definitely tune in for that one. That's awesome. Have to tune in. Yeah. Wednesday, we have um, Brittany Karbowski. She is adorable and sweet and so incredible, an incredible voiceover actress. On Thursday, 
We have Gates McFadden, Robert Picardo, and John Billingsley, also from, of course, Star Trek. Very and cool. Friday, we actually have two shows. We have a bonus show at 4 p.m. with Charles oh, Martin, nice. the voice of Mario. And then at the regular scheduled time, we have Alan Ruck and Barry Boswick. And then next week, Danica and I will be back with uh, Joey Fatone and Danny Francesi from Mean Girls. So that should be fun, too. And we'll have more games. But hopefully we can have the two of you guys back soon because you guys are so wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, this is awesome. Thank you both for joining us. This has been so, so much fun. Oh, no, thank it. you, guys. Yeah, I have a, nice I have a quick you, question. Matt. I have a, you too, man. I have a quick question for you. Are you going to be directing any more episodes? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I, I'm, I'm supposed to, well, I don't know when the schedule is going to be now. I'm scheduled yeah. to direct episode seven coming up in season 11, which would have started in July. But because of all this, everything might shift. Yeah. And I had directed two episodes uh, of the new show, The World Beyond. I've already directed two of those once that releases. Oh, wow. um, cool. So uh, they only did 10 and I did two. So I've, I've I got a pretty, pretty good. Um, That's awesome. Input on the series. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 cast is fantastic. I think the 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 Walking Dead world is going to really enjoy the show because it yeah, it makes a lot of sense the story cool. what they've done. Um, so I'm excited about it. So yes, uh, yeah. I, I loved I love the episodes you did. So that's great news. That's right, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Cool. Well, we got some music for you from Matt if you need any for the new one. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm seriously gonna check it out. Oh, awesome. I didn't awesome. forget. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much once again. We got Matt Novetsky, Michael Cutlass, Danica Janelle, and we'll see you guys real soon. Make sure to turn on a Monday. Goodbye. Right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Take care. We do have a closing video if it plays. If not, check out the GalaxyCon store online. You can find items like t shirts, signed and certified Funko Pops, magnets, keychains, and pins exclusive comic book variants, and so much more. Make sure to check out our collectibles page, which features autographs for every fandom, from Star Trek to My Hero Academia and everything in between. So what are you waiting for? Check out galaxycon.myshopify.com.